Hello again everyone from Tokyo Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. Uh, today's video is going to be an instructional video showing you how to do uh, uh, a general cleanup on a Mamiya Super 23 or Universal Press medium format camera. Uh, what goes for one camera goes for the other. These are almost identical cameras with the exception of the uh, film back mounting system. Uh, on the Super 23, we have these uh, four uh, thumb screws around the back of the camera, and by loosening these, you can pull back uh, the film back, and you can uh, do tilts or swings, uh, which allow for some perspective correction, which is really handy when you're doing things like shooting uh, architecture or things like that. Uh, the Universal does not have the tilts and swings on the rear, uh, I guess, standard, but uh, you can use a Polaroid instant film back on the Universal, which you cannot do with the Super 23. Uh, other than this feature, the cameras are pretty much identical. Uh, we don't need a lot of tools to do this particular job, we just need an assortment of screwdrivers. You need a slotted screwdriver with a rather fine tip and kind of a sturdy one because we need this to remove the rangefinder and viewfinder assembly on the under the top cover. Uh, we need a Phillips screwdriver and depending on uh, the year of your camera, a slotted screwdriver. Now, the earlier cameras, most of the uh, internal parts were, uh, I guess, fastened with slotted screws. And the later cameras uh, used more Phillips head screws. So, um, I have uh, an assortment of both kinds here. I'm not sure exactly uh, what age this camera is. Uh, it, it looks quite clean and in a very good condition, but um, I'll show you how to find the exact age once we have it apart. There's a, another difference between the Universal and Super 23, or at least the later Universal cameras, and that is that uh, you have to remove three more screws uh, when taking apart the Universal, because this uh, front bezel, which goes around the viewfinder, is attached with uh, two screws, one on either side, and you have to remove those, at, at, pull down the bezel and lift it off and it has an extra screw which holds on the top cover, which you find under the bezel on the top here. Uh, this is a Super 23 camera and it does not have these screws. So if you're working on a Universal, uh, keep in mind that you'll have to remove these three Phillips screws. Earlier Universal cameras uh, are exactly the same as this one, and the Chrome versions uh, are also the same as the Super 23. So uh, to get started, the first thing we have to do is uh, take off all of the uh, accessories here. So that includes the pistol grip and all that. It makes it much easier to uh, handle the camera with all of these things taken off. Uh, remove the lens and then uh, the film back. And I'll go ahead and uh, tighten these down so they don't move around. remove the eye cup. All right, and uh, the first thing I want to do is kind of brush off uh, uh, the dust. And I have a toothbrush for this purpose here, and uh, getting rid of some of the dust here prevents me, you know, prevents it from like moving inside the camera when I'm taking it apart and going inside to clean it. Okay. So, uh, the camera is ready to be uh, disassembled and cleaned, so I'll be back in a minute and we'll get started on that. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started by removing the top cover. And for doing the rangefinder adjustment in these cameras, unfortunately the top cover must be removed. Some of the earlier cameras with the chrome backs had uh, access covers, small screw-on caps which went on the rear cover, and you could remove these and underneath these you would find access to the screws to adjust the horizontal and vertical adjustment of the rangefinder. But uh, the black painted cameras do not have these uh, access holes and not all of the silver ones do. So uh, in order to adjust the rangefinder you have to remove the top cover. So uh, the first thing to do is I uh, get uh, something here to hold the hardware and I usually use uh, old filters for this. They're quite handy for holding stuff. 
So uh, first thing is I will uh, remove the screw for the selector switch and then the selector switch itself. I'm going to go ahead and set this to this setting. Uh, this uses a slotted screw and comes out like so. Uh, the next thing I'll do is remove the leatherette from behind the eyepiece. Now, uh, sometimes this leatherette can be kind of hard to remove. Uh, it sometimes it will not come off in one piece. Uh, if if it's really hard to get off and you can't get a screwdriver to slide easily under it the way I'm doing right here, you can warm it up with a hair dryer or a heat gun as long as it's not too hot, and that will soften the glue enough and allow it to lift off easily like this. I'm gonna just set this aside. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is remove the four screws which hold on the eyepiece assembly. Uh, on this camera, I guess this is a later camera because this has uh, Phillips screws under the leatherette, whereas for an earlier camera, these would be slotted brass screws. A thing to look out for if you are buying one of these cameras is to keep an eye on this uh, glass eyepiece element. Uh, these sometimes get foggy and hazy and the, the haze and fog can be quite difficult to remove, sometimes impossible to remove. You can usually clean it up enough to where you can see a little bit more clearly through the viewfinder, but uh, uh, sometimes uh, it's you know it, it can't be uh, cleaned off at all, and it, it makes it really hard to use the camera. And these lenses are kind of hard to find. So uh, I'll go ahead and set these aside here, and then here we have a couple of uh, lenses in the back. You see some bits of uh, glass around here. Uh, that's normal. Uh, it always comes off because this is kind of a a really snug fit when they put in the uh, lens holder here. I'll go ahead and just drop that out and let the first one fall out. Then there's a spacer here underneath. Uh, the wide end of the spacer faces rearward. The narrow end of the spacer faces toward the inside of the camera. And the lenses, the uh, curved part, uh, convex part, faces toward the front of the camera. And the flat faces toward the rear. The first time I took one of these apart, I really didn't know what I was doing very much. This was a number of years ago, and it took me a while of putting these lenses in and out until I found the right order and was able to, uh, to complete the job. So, next thing we do is take out the three screws which hold on the top cover. Right, I'll set those here. These screws often have a small plastic washer behind them. I try to keep track of the washer. Usually they come off with the screw, sometimes they don't. Uh, the washer helps prevent the screw from becoming stuck to the top cover. If uh, the, the screws are just made out of steel and they can corrode a little bit and sometimes they'll stick to the top cover and it'll be kind of difficult to uh, remove them out. Sometimes they break when you try to take them off. So now the three screws are off, we'll go ahead and lift off the top cover. So if I were just wanting to adjust the range finder on the camera, uh, at this point I would reattach the lens. And then uh, I would adjust the range finder using these two screws. There's one here on the bottom, and this is for the horizontal adjustment. And this one here on this side is for the vertical adjustment. So. Uh, you have two screws here on the horizontal adjustment. Sometimes you'll adjust this and find out that you still can't get the range finder to line up. That means you'll probably have to uh, loosen the second screw a little bit as well. So, uh, we, go, we have the top cover off and we're ready to move on to the next step. So, uh, let's uh, come back in just a moment. All right, so let's go ahead and continue. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the rangefinder and viewfinder assembly. Uh, this has to be done to do a proper job on this because we have to be able to clean the internal glass elements to the lenses. You can't really reach anything while this is still in place. So uh, the first thing we'll do is I'm going to take my screwdriver here and I have one with kind of a, a large handle on it because these screws are sometimes ungodly tight and it's really difficult to get them loose. Sometimes they're not tight at all, but generally they're, they're quite snug. So uh, 
there's a screw here through this hole. That's the first one. There's a second one here. The, the uh, uh, I guess, a beam, I guess the rangefinder mirror is connected by a spring to the center screw. And then the final screw is located on this side where my finger is. So I'll go ahead and remove these. I'll start with this one. Uh, you want to make sure to be careful how you line up the screwdriver. It should always be exactly vertical so that the tip of the screwdriver is seated against deep inside the slot on the screw. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice to get used to using tools in the proper way. Uh, I was a car guy when I was in high school and enjoyed working on cars a lot and I remember uh, working with friends one day trying to take the cylinder heads off of a, a Plymouth 340 duster that uh, belonged to a friend of mine and he kept trying to get the, the bolts off and they kept the socket kept slipping and every time he couldn't get it to go I would hold it on and I would be able to get it off easily and the trick is just making sure that the tool is exactly perpendicular to uh, the fastener you're trying to remove. So I have the two screws on either side uh, loosened and ready to come out. The next thing we have to do is remove this screw here. And this one here you have to be careful with because uh, this uh, rangefinder mirror, the one which uh, reflects the frame lines, is very close to it and it's quite easy to uh, accidentally crack this mirror if the screwdriver slips or if it's too close. And unfortunately I know this from personal experience. So I go ahead and I pop off this spring. Uh, it's a, there's a drop of glue which holds it on place and that gets it out of the way and that allows me to uh, remove the screw. I always loosen the screw before I remove the spring because when I turn it a little bit it makes it the end of the spring comes around and it makes it easier to pry it off. So uh, it's just one of those little tricks which makes the job a little bit easier. So I think I've got all those all the screws off. So take the viewfinder off. I'll go ahead and remove the lens because now the camera's kind of off balance. And inside here in the top we have a few different things. We have uh, the mechanism which turns when you are focusing the lens and this actuates the rangefinder. And we have another one here. This uh, red thing is kind of uh, lets you know when you don't have the lens extended. Now, uh, uh, a lot of these cameras have the 100mm f3.5 lens and it's an extendable lens, kind of like the old Leica uh, cameras. And uh, I've sold cameras to people before and then they, they say they can't get the, the lens to work right, that the pictures are all out of focus and that's because they haven't pulled it out and locked it into position. So the lens is not in, uh, set in the right way. So on most of these cameras, if the lens is still, I guess, in the transport mode, it will cause this red flag to move in front of the uh, rangefinder window. So you know that you have to unlock the lens, but not all cameras come with this feature. So uh, fortunately, this one does. So uh, the first thing I want to do is kind of uh, try to clean this out a little bit, uh, uh, brush away the loose dust and stuff like that. And then I have uh, some uh, a can of compressed air, uh, which works pretty well. If you don't have a can of compressed air, you can use a blower, kind of like this one. Okay, that gets the worst of the dust. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, clean the insides of the uh, viewfinder and rangefinder windows. If you have a universal uh, and you can remove the front bezel, you can pop these glasses out and clean them separately. And that's kind of a, a better way to get them uh, very clean. It's not really necessary. Sometimes they are glued in place and they won't come out easily and you risk breaking them if you, if you try to. And if you have to remove the, the front bezel to replace a broken glass or something like that, you really have to heat it up uh, to soften the glue because if you don't, the bezel just kind of bends and distorts and uh, it looks terrible. Sometimes it just, it, it won't come off in one piece. It breaks and you can't use it again. Go over the 
this twice, and I have the ceiling light behind me which reflects off the glass. And right now the reflection is going toward my eyes, so I can see if there's any haze or dust or anything on this glass. And it's quite clear. Alright, I'll go ahead and blow it off. All right. Uh, the next thing we need to do is get to work on uh, the rangefinder itself. And these have this uh, rubber foam uh, light seal material to kind of prevent dust from getting inside. The only problem is that this uh, tends to dry rot, and you can see this is dry rotted here. And rather than prevent dust from getting into the camera, it becomes uh, a big source of dust and contaminates everything inside. And this stuff, depending on the, the climate or whatever, it can become stuck. The, the dust piece is stuck to the beam splitting mirror. And when you try to clean it off, it cleans off or it rubs off the reflective uh, surface on the mirror, which isn't good. So I'll go ahead and clean this off. And uh, to make sure I, I get it cleaned well, I'll go ahead and I'll put a little bit of uh, lacquer thinner here and let it soak in and when it uh, when the glue is soft I'll go ahead and clean it more thoroughly and I'll go ahead and brush off extra material here all right and next thing I want to do is I want to remove uh, this actuator for the viewfinder masks. When you uh, select the view, I guess the viewfinder masks here by switching it back and forward, it switches between the 100 millimeter and 250 millimeter masks in the rangefinder. To be able to clean inside properly, you have to be able to get into the mirror and such. So these have to be removed. So uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll once again blow out any dust and I'll take some cotton swabs and with my uh, these pliers here I'll flatten them a little bit this makes it easier for cleaning and I can reach into the tight corners and stuff and uh, get the worst of the dirt out I'll start with the mirror here. Uh, this camera is in quite good condition. There isn't much in the way of haze or problems with it. It would probably be okay to go just with uh, adjusting the rangefinder. Uh, it was very nice and clean and clear uh, before, so uh, but it'll be much cleaner and clearer now and this shouldn't need to be repaired or cleaned for a number of years again. Uh, speaking of years, this camera says it was made January 19th of 49, and 49 is the 49th year of the Showa era, which would be, I guess, uh, 1973. So this camera is made January 19th, uh, 1973. So if you have one of these cameras and you're curious about how old it is, you'll find the date on the bottom. At least, uh, maybe 19 times out of 20. Uh, on occasion these cameras have been recalled for or returned for repairs or things like that and when they replace the viewfinder uh, they put on one that doesn't have a date. Next thing I'm going to do is remove the the front viewfinder lenses here. I remove these two screws on the one side. On the other side I just loosen them. I don't take them all the way out because you have these baffles here and getting them out is difficult and putting them back in is more difficult so I just loosen them enough to pop it out. There is a metal tab here which serves absolutely no purpose. It's, it's supposed to hold the spring in place but it doesn't do that at all so I, I don't worry about these. If, you, if, you, if your camera doesn't have one and a lot of them don't have them, don't worry about it. If it has one and you forget it, put it back in. Also don't worry about it. Uh, it's just kind of a useless add-on. I don't know why they put it in there. So uh, this lens here is uh, the front lens to the viewfinder and it's actually two lenses which are held together in this metal bracket. 
And to clean this properly, you have to uh, remove the lenses. Uh, these corners here are crimped downward a little bit, and there is a black epoxy glue which holds them firmly in place. So being very careful, I'll, I'll pry up on these tabs a little bit. Uh, being careful not to scratch or crack the lens, and it pops out like so. On occasion, these are prone to getting a uh, haze on the inside as well, uh, depending on the environment where they are stored. So uh, sometimes the haze can be simply cleaned off with lens cleaning fluid. Uh, other times it has to be polished out a little bit in order to get the glass clear enough to be able to see through it. Uh, this one here is very clean. Uh, this camera was, I guess, uh, stored in a good place because uh, I can tell it hasn't been taken apart before, and yet everything on the inside is still quite clean and nice. So once again I'm using the reflection of the lights behind me to make sure that I don't leave any haze or dust or marks on the inside of the glass. And I have a piece of uh, a genuine Nikon lens cleaning tissue. Okay, let's. Needs a little bit more cleaning. be a little uh, tedious at times. These cameras aren't difficult to work on but they do have a number of steps which you have to follow to uh, to do the job well. Alright, and I set it so it's, this side is facing upward and the part I just cleaned is facing downward. That way I don't have any dust falling on it. Uh, for the second lean, lens I'll simply uh, put the fluid on it and just clean it all the way around. And then I'll first clean it off with this rather grungy looking uh, microfiber cloth. It looks pretty bad but uh, these cloths work better as you use them more for whatever reason as they get dirtier they make less lint and they seem to leave a, a better or cleaner surface after you uh, wipe them off. I know it sounds like you should use a fresh clean one every time but whenever I use a new microfiber cloth for cleaning off one of these it leaves a lot of lint on it and this one here uh, crystal clear even with this ugly old cloth. Okay, I have to put it back together, so I'll make sure that there's no <laughs> dust. Uh, on the rear lens, it's not exactly the same on both sides. There's a kind of a 45 degree cut on this side, uh, a bevel on the edge of the glass, and that has to go toward the wide tab here. So I'll put these like this, and once again, <laughs> blow to make sure I have no dust. set this in and I push in these tabs by doing it on the corner of my work table here and then uh, I don't use epoxy to put these back together I simply use a, a contact cement and I put just a little bit it's always possible that uh, I, I make a mistake and I have to take apart the camera and again in the future to fix this mistake and I don't want uh, a repair like this to be permanent that is that I that it can't be taken apart in the future by me or someone else okay so I'll go ahead and set this aside in this position and let the glue set next thing we have to do is uh, clean out uh, the mirrors and optics on the inside so I'll be right back. Okay so let's go ahead and get started on here. The first thing I want to do here is I want to be uh, I want to clean out 
Uh, the inside of there's a, a hole here in the mirror which the reflected image comes through. I want to clean that out on the inside. And then there's this um, hollow tube uh, that runs right through the middle of this lens. And on the inside of this hollow tube is uh, a small lens. And for to get good rangefinder contrast, this has to be clean. You can clean up everything else and it can look really nice and clean and clear, but you find the camera still doesn't have really good contrast for the uh, rangefinder. It's because the small lens inside this tube is uh, dirty. So, I go ahead and I bend this cotton swab with a pair of pliers so I can reach inside the tube. And I just wet it and turn it like so. Uh, these tubes are glued in place so they're not easily removed to be cleaned. Though sometimes the glue becomes dry and brittle with age and when you try to clean it, it ends up popping out. It makes it easier to clean but more difficult to put the camera back together. Uh, then I clean uh, the little window in the back. Alright, and blow it out. And I can see if it's clean by using the mirror here. So what I do is I turn the mirror until I can see through the tube and, uh, and I can see a reflection of the beam splitting mirror. So this one is nice and clean now. Alright, uh, the next job is to clean uh, the big beam splitting mirror. And I need uh, lens cleaning uh, tissues and some cotton swabs for this. Uh, I'll start by cleaning the one in the front here which would face toward the front of the camera. Uh, this one is quite easy to clean, it's not fragile. Uh, the coating is quite, uh, well there's no coating on it so no risk of uh, damaging it. And I'll put the cotton swab inside of the uh, tissue and clean it like so. And it looks quite nice. And I'll flatten the end of the cotton swab little bit and this allows me to reach all the way into the corner to any places which I might have missed. When I've done this long enough I can kind of tell by the feel if it's clean or not. This one is quite clean. All right now do the other side. Uh, this is the side you have to be careful with especially on the older cameras made in the 1960s because uh, sometimes uh, the coating on the beam splitting mirror becomes uh, very fragile and is easily rubbed off. What I'll usually do is I'll try cleaning uh, first a section in the corner which isn't in the middle of the field of view and clean it and, and wipe it off and if it doesn't rub the coating off there the rest of the coating is probably good. If it does rub the coating off there uh, I'll avoid cleaning the rest of the mirror. I'll just uh, brush off any dust or any extra stuff because uh, uh, if the coating rubs off then you don't have any contrast and you can't use the rangefinder in the camera. And if you can't use the rangefinder and focus the camera it's not very useful. Uh, this camera I'm not worried about. This is a, a somewhat later one and it's in very good condition on the inside so uh, the coating will be uh, durable. Uh, put that inside like so. Okay. I have to do pay a little more attention to the edges because I can't get so close there with the. Uh, lens cleaning tissue. Okay, that's very clean and clear.
Okay, looks good. Uh, the last thing to clean is this uh, lens here. And this is the lens which projects the frame lines onto the beam splitting mirror. So to clean this, I, I flatten the cotton swab and I curve it a little bit. Like so. This allows me to clean underneath the metal tube which goes through the middle of the glass. So if I turn it like this I can get underneath and make sure to get everything clean. Uh, if this isn't especially clean it doesn't really make any difference. Uh, the, the frame lines don't uh, are always bright regardless of the condition of this particular lens but it's always a good idea to clean it out because dust and dirt which are on which could be found on this lens might come loose or move to other things, so uh, cleaner is better. And looking at the mirror, I can see the light reflecting through the lens and I can see how clean it is. Okay. All right. So now we're ready to start putting the uh, rangefinder assembly back together. All right. So let's get started putting this back together. The first thing I'm going to do is I will reattach this uh, selector for the frame lines. Uh, it's held on by two screws. Okay, and when you're putting this on, make sure that this uh, round part here, this uh, the end of the round tube, is fitted into this diagonal slot. Uh, if it's not, then it's not going to uh, switch the uh, frame lines back and forth, so it has to be in the right position. All right, and the next step is going to be to uh, replace the lenses on the front. Set it like so and slide it into place and take the uh, two screws here. The magnetic screwdriver comes in handy for these because you can just pick up the screws like so. Uh, earlier cameras have brass screws so magnetic screwdriver doesn't help much in their case. Make sure all four screws are snug. And then this spring here, which applies pressure to the viewfinder mask, I'll bend that around and make sure it sits flush. Uh, even if the spring is broken or missing, gravity will usually do the job. The spring is just kind of an extra, I guess, insurance to make sure that it works properly. The next thing we have to do is uh, clean these lenses for the rear part of the viewfinder. So they're actually quite clean already, but I'll get them a little cleaner. What I'll do is I'll, I'll simply turn them while I'm holding the lens cleaning cloth on top. Window is open here and I have some light outside. That's very nice and clear so I'll go ahead and drop that like so. And to help it to fall in flat I'll use a clean cotton swab. Then I'll put in this spacer ring, and once again the wide part of the spacer ring goes on the top, the skinny part goes on the bottom. Okay, I take the second lens and a little bit of cleaning fluid, and then clean it with uh, lens tissue. clean. Okay, before I put it in I'll hold, I'll blow out any dust and holding the ring with my fingers otherwise it blows out. Drop that on like so. 
Next thing I have to do is put this uh, lens support in the back and make sure that it's horizontal. These are glued in place and you can tell by the marks on the glue if you have it aligned properly. That looks good. And then I have to clean the eyepiece. I'll start by the inside, cleaning the inside. And then the back side, which faces toward you, has this uh, black paint around it, so that way uh, you can be sure that you're not putting it in backwards. and then drop this in place like so. And the next step is to make sure that nothing moves by replacing the this little panel on the back and putting in the four screws. Okay, so it's mostly together, and it's going to make sure there's no dust on the inside. And the last thing I'll do is clean the front glass here. Uh, this is the most obvious part when you look at the front of the camera, so you want it to be really clean. Once again, I'm angling it to look at the table lamp over to my right, and with the table lamp reflecting on it, I can see if there are any marks or haze or anything which is uh, which shouldn't be there. These lenses are coated, just like the lenses on the, the main optical lenses. So you have to be kind of careful with them. Uh, if the coating rubs off, it doesn't really make any difference in the view when you're looking through the back of the camera. But if you look through the viewfinder in the front, you can kind of see the uh, where the coating is rubbed off. Now, once again, it doesn't really make any difference in how it works. Okay. Right, make sure the next is going thing I'm going to do is reinstall the rangefinder in the camera body. Before that, I'll make sure that the glass here is completely clean. I've already cleaned it twice, but uh, the third time is the charm. These tend to be really dirty and hard to clean at times. Luckily this camera doesn't require so much. It's already quite clean. If it were really bad, I would take off the bezel and remove the glasses and clean them that way. That would be the safest way to do it. Okay, so I'm ready to reinstall the uh, rangefinder. What I'll do is I'll replace the screws where they belong. One goes there, the other one goes over here, and uh, the middle one I never took out. I'm right-handed, so putting it in with my left hand is a little bit difficult. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and set this back on here, and I'm going to make sure that um, 
this uh, rangefinder arm isn't sticking out. This one has a cutout here. Some of them don't have the same cutout, and if you try to put it down, it might get stuck. So make sure that that's all in place and that it uh, moves freely. And then I tighten the screws. I try to tighten the screws. It's very exactly and there isn't a lot of uh, leeway in the position of the camera so I sometimes have to play with a little bit till it's lined up just right Oop, there okay there we go Okay, then I'll use my uh, large screwdriver to make sure these are tight. I'll be careful by the mirror here so I don't crack it. Alright, so all the three screws are back in. The next I have to reattach the return spring for the rangefinder mirror. This is very important because um, uh, if this isn't attached, then uh, the rangefinder will not work. I'll put a drop of glue around this so it doesn't come off sometime in the future or while the camera is being shipped in the mail. Okay. And that's the uh, most of the job. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is blow it out a little bit more. And put the dust cover on the top here. Not that it keeps out much dust, but since it came with the camera, I'll make sure to put it back on. And the next step, now that all of this has been taken apart and put back together, is to adjust the range finder. So, So let's pause for just a moment and I'll adjust the rangefinder. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've adjusted the rangefinder and once again uh, I adjust the vertical adjustment with this uh, slotted screw here on the bottom. Excuse me, the horizontal adjustment is here and the vertical adjustment is here. Uh, this one I had to adjust the horizontal a little bit but the vertical was spot on so I didn't have to do anything with that. Okay, so the next step is to uh, replace the top cover. Before I put the top cover on, I will clean it off a little bit. I'm using my uh, handy microfiber cloth. So simply slide it on like so. And replace the three Phillips screws. Uh, these some, sometimes uh, don't line up exactly well because these uh, uh, stamped metal top covers uh, can distort a little bit, especially if they've been dented or whatever. Uh, this one's never been dented, so all the holes line up really well. And then the last thing to do is replace the selector here. It's almost the last thing, it's not quite the last thing. Uh, 
the last thing to do is uh, actually to uh, replace the leatherette. So what I'll do is I'll take my uh, contact cement and I'll put it kind of close to the edges here. This already has some of the original sticky glue still left on, but unfortunately uh, it won't hold it on. Once you take one of these off, it tends to keep coming off unless you apply fresh glue. Okay, and that's it. The viewfinder, rangefinder has been cleaned and adjusted. Uh, everything is nice and crystal clear. Um, it's adjusted to the lens. Uh, sometimes if you get a new lens for one of these cameras or a lens which wasn't original to it, uh, it can be a little bit out of adjustment, so you have to uh, kind of readjust it to match a particular lens. Though most of the time uh, you, you don't have to bother to do that. If, if it works with one lens, it usually works with all the others. Uh, the lens itself can be adjusted. On the back of the focusing ring of the lens, there's a really tiny slotted screwdriver. Uh, slotted screw with a with a small screwdriver you can use this to lift the uh, I guess this land which goes around the outside up or down a little bit to adjust it but you need uh, a focusing screen and a magnifier to be able to adjust it very precisely but uh, if that's necessary you know you, you can do it with one of these cameras all right so that is it for the the viewfinder rangefinder adjustment and all that the next thing we're going to do is we'll uh, uh, take a quick uh, look at the lens and I'll show you how to clean it up on the inside. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean up the lens. The first thing we'll do is we'll remove the lens from the camera. And I'll set the camera body aside. Uh, these are a lot like the old large format uh, cameras. They have a leaf shutter in the uh, in the center, and it's, pretty, it's basically just like a large format camera lens, which is fitted with a focusing collar and such. Uh, it, it's, I guess, uh, user maintainable in some ways, like a large format lens. A common problem that these cameras have is sometimes the a shutter charging lever gets sticky and it doesn't return all the way to the end and so the shutter doesn't quite uh, uh, close all the way or uh, or doesn't open. So a quick uh, and easy solution to that is to apply a little bit of uh, uh, lighter fluid. Uh, this one's fine, I won't do it, but if it were sticky I would hold it so this is exactly vertical and I would apply a few drops of lighter fluid and let it run down and then cycle the shutter a few times and it would work fine. The next thing we would have to do is clean the glass on the inside and you can simply unthread the front element of the lens like so and it comes right out. So to clean the inside of the rear lens element I would set the aperture to f3.5 which is wide open, set the shutter speed to b and you can charge a shutter or you can use, uh, some of these have, this one doesn't seem to, uh, oh, here it is. Uh, or maybe it isn't. <laughs> ah, there it is. Uh, this one has a uh, actuator which opens the lens. It has a safety release on this particular one. Some of these don't. And that will keep the lens open. And first thing I'll do is uh, blow it out. And I always clean the inside of these, even if it looks quite clean, because uh, uh, the lubricants on the inside of the lens, they kind of outgas a little bit. And this kind of gets on the coating of the lens and can give it kind of a hazy appearance. And sometimes you'll find little spots of, uh, of fungus or whatever on the inside. Uh, fortunately, the, the glass in these lenses is very high quality and it's very resistant to etching from fungus, so uh, even extreme cases of fungus, and I've, I've seen a few extreme cases, uh, they don't really have any uh, lasting effect on the glass. It, it can damage the coating to the glass somewhat, but not the glass itself, and 99.9% uh, .9 of people would never notice uh, any, I guess, 
uh, effect on images from flaws in lens coating unless it's very very severe and you have to completely remove the coating from the lens in order to uh, get the glass clear again. Uh, when I clean the glass I apply the uh, cleaning fluid to a cotton swab and I use uh, pure cotton swabs and I rub it in and then I rub it off and as I'm wiping it off I notice that it leaves a kind of a residue or film but as I keep rubbing it off then this residue or film rubs off as well leaving the clean glass underneath and when I'm done I make sure to blow out any dust and uh, release the uh, catch here and fire the shutter I'll do it I'll do this one more time just to make sure that it's uh, there's no dust inside and then the next step is to clean the rear of the front element This is nice and clean already. Yeah, here in Japan, the weather is kind of extreme. Uh, we have really hot and humid summers. We have very cold and dry winters. And uh, sometimes, if you no, all, all the time, if you don't store things carefully, this change in the climate and such can have a big effect on. Uh, on old things like cameras or musical instruments or anything else like that. So it's really nice to come across ones like this which have been stored carefully and despite its age still requiring very little work. Uh, this camera would have been completely fine to shoot as it was. Uh, there was nothing really major that required. There was nothing that actually had to be repaired. It just needed uh, cleaning and it didn't really need the cleaning all that much. Okay, and then the last part is the rear element. The lens helicoids in these uh, sometimes get a little sluggish and the lens is hard to turn uh, depending on the one you have. If, you, if I focus this one all the way out to minimum focus, I can access the threads uh, to the lens helicoid here and I can just put a little uh, uh, thin oil on those threads and then focus the lens in and out a few times. And as the oil works its way inward, the lens will focus more and more easily. There's a little oily residue uh, on the rear element. So, a little uh, naphtha or lighter fluid it cleans it off quite handily. And with the oil removed, go ahead and clean this up. Other lenses are kind of prone to sticky helicoids. The 127 millimeter lens especially. You can free it back up but it's not like this lens here. The 127 millimeter lens has a couple of dust covers which are installed and those have to be removed. And then you can access the, the threads to the helicoid. Uh, you can lubricate them and sometimes add a little uh, naphtha or lighter fluid. And this thins down the oil and allows it to penetrate and then replace the, uh, uh, I guess, baffles and screw everything back together. Uh, work it a few times and it gets easier. You just, just have to be careful when you remove the baffles and the screws which hold them in. Do not focus the lens because it knocks the holes out of alignment. So just remove the baffles, put the oil where you can see the helicoid threads, replace the baffles with the screws, and let the oil sit, and then, and then work the lens to uh, get it in all the right places. So. Uh, the lens is clean. Uh, let's see, uh, shutter works okay. So uh, sometimes the uh, slow speed escapements is a little slow in here. Uh, I don't recommend taking one of these lenses apart. The shutter on these uh, Mamiya uh, lenses is very sophisticated, and when you start taking it apart, you know, a lot of springs and things tend to pop out. Um, if the shutter blades are stuck, I would put a little bit of uh, lighter fluid on the shutter blades with a cotton swab uh, that would loosen them up a little bit then cycle the shutter a few times. I would repeat that a few times until uh, it was working reliably 
And to do the best job if you're doing it that way is also remove the rear lens element. There are slots on either side so you can screw it up and that way you can uh, kind of clean the front and back of the shutter blades. Unless you really, really know what you're doing, I, I don't dare to take apart one of these shutters to try to clean the blades individually because it's a, these are a real bear to put back together. Easy to take apart, but not so easy to uh, uh, get back into one piece. So, anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Uh, uh, kind of a long one, uh, not as long as some of the other videos, but... Uh, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you're interested in buying a vintage Japanese camera like this uh, Mamiya Super 23 or Universal or something else, I have these for sale in my online store, my Etsy store, and my eBay store. I'll post links to my stores in the description below. I'll be posting more videos shortly as I've received uh, quite a few new cameras and some which I haven't uh, uh, worked on or have much experience with yet or had a chance to describe. So if you want to see these, uh, please subscribe. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon.